Hey guys, I want to show you async and await. It's a really cool concept in JavaScript that helps a lot when you're dealing with asynchronous code. Now right here I have some code and I'm using Quokka to print out the output right away so we can see as we're typing the results. And I also have the Quokka window up because we're going to be showing some objects and it's a little bit easier to see the objects right here. So I imported fetch and this is an asynchronous function that we're going to play with. I'm first going to show you uh, what it's like to use an asynchronous function uh, without await and like the regular way to do it. So this guy returns a promise and I'm just calling main which calls fetch and then we can see the results. So if you've ever used fetch before you know you can't just return fetch like this. You kind of get some gibberish uh, metadata. You need to actually call json on the response for it. But fetch returns a promise. So to get the results of a promise, you call dot then. And now you have this x, which is what we just saw. And I can call x dot json on it and uh, grab that. So now we can see an actual object back, the json response from hitting the random user API here. And uh, we can see we get results, and we get an array, and we see the first one is a female. So this is well and good. This is how you would do it if you were just uh, doing it the regular way. So what is so wrong about doing this way, or what is what's you know what is there to improve on? So let's say we wanted to do multiple async calls in a row. For example, x.json is an uh, async function as well. So if we wanted to get access to the JSON uh, object right away, we had to call dot then on it. So I could say y, and then I could return y dot results. And the reason you may want to just get the array, and maybe I want to get the gender of the first person. So I could say zero dot gender, and we could get the gender of the first person, which is a male. So if I had to do this again, right? Let's say I wanted to get the results of this, and then I wanted to make another API call and another API call. You can see where this. Uh, can get out of hand pretty quickly where I'm just stacking uh, dot thens here and we just keep going again and again. So basically the problem is it just gets really cluttered using dot then a lot of times. And the way you would handle errors in this case, so for example let's say I forgot to do add a t or something. So bad protocol there. Um, you can see an error is being thrown right now. So if you wanted to catch this error, you would do dot catch. And so we'd catch the error associated to that promise. And we could just say an error has occurred. Or you know, whatever you could return the error if you wanted to. And we see this is the response, an error has occurred. So how do we do this with async and await to make this better? Because you can already see how um, kind of ugly this code has become. So we can make this a lot cleaner. So the first thing is to use await, you need to use it inside an asynchronous function. And to denote something as an asynchronous function, you take the function, so here's our function, and right before the parentheses, you say async. And this guy is now an asynchronous function. So we're gonna just console, or comment that out. You say const response is equal to await of fetch. Uh, and then down here, I'm going to just return response, but we're going to do some stuff with response. So this is equivalent to me saying uh, dot then x, x. So returning just the value. So right now we have the response. We basically have the result of the promise of fetch. So what we can do now is we can say const json, so the json response. You can say dot json. Now remember when I called dot json here, I had to do dot then because this was a promise as well. So now I can do a wait out in front um, and let's just return json and let's fix our error. We can see we get the results back. And now you can see this is really nice for doing uh, async call after async call. So now I can do, you know, I don't even have to, I can, I don't need this stuff anymore. I can just do dot results, grab the first one, dot gender, and we see female. So this makes a lot of sense and looks really nice. 
compared to the other one. We can see we made our first call, then we got JSON from the response, and we do the gender. So the reason I like it is it just cleans up the code a ton. And so what's the deal with this async thing here? So whenever we attach async to a function like this, that means the function will now return a promise and it is asynchronous. So here is uh, my async. This is another async function. You don't have to do async code inside of this, but you can. So here is me just saying we can take a parameter x, return x plus 5. So now I can return, you can say a const answer is equal to my async uh, 6. So if I call it like this, so I want to concatenate these two and see the results of both of them. So by default, right, this function, if you if I did not add async, we just get the result like we normally would. This is a normal function. You've seen this before. This looks fine. Um, and I need to make sure to call or actually put the right thing. There we go, answer. So we see mail 11, fine. But what happens if I add async here? By the way, if you don't have parentheses like this, you just add async like right there, right in front of your first parameter and that works just fine. So now you see how we're returning a, a promise. So when we add async in front, it makes this thing asynchronous so we're now returning a promise. So you need to await it. Uh, and then it works as normal, we get 11. So make sure to await async functions or you can call my async. And if you prefer the other syntax, you can do dot then. Uh, can treat it as async functions. So how do we handle errors? Uh, bam, just exploded this guy, right? He doesn't work. So the way you can do this is uh, wrap in try catch now. So if we get an error, we can return there was an error. You can do whatever you want with that, right? So we see there was an error from this function, uh, from the try catch. We could return the error if we wanted to, which we have right here. But uh, yeah, so you wrap each one in try catches um, the weights. So you just treat these as like regular function calls now, which is really nice. The last thing I want to go over real quick is uh, a pitfall, or not a pitfall, but a um, something to be wary of. You can easily see yourself doing this. Let's say I want to call the API twice. So response one, response two. Um, let's call this response one. And I want to see the gender of both of them. So response, uh, let's get JSON one, and oops, JSON two from response two, and we don't care about it, my async function up there. And here JSON one, JSON two dot results zero dot gender. Okay. So this is me getting uh, the gender, the first gender of first r random call and the second random call. So this is a sm this is you know cool. I'm doing some, my async code like this. I'm making two calls. I'm doing JSON twice. But there's a small problem with this code. These calls and these calls, the all all this is happening asynchronously, or not asynchronously, synchronously. So I'm first finishing this call, then I'm calling this. That I'm calling this, that I'm calling this. So there's four calls that are happening. When you could parallelize or parallelize, these could run in parallel, these two right here. Uh, but because we use the await, it's not. So it looks like we're, you know, doing async code, but we're actually making it synchronous here. So the way to do this, and this is the way I usually do this, is so you say promise one, promise two, um, and then you say const and I, I break down the destructure of the array. So response one, response two is equal to await promise.all p1, p2. Um, cool, so it does resolve. So now what happens is I'm fetching both of these. So we fire off both promises. So they're now both running at the same time. And then I'm awaiting right here the response of both of them, right? So these are running in parallel, but before I can call JSON1 and JSON2 on them, I need them to be resolved. So that's why I'm awaiting all of them. So promise.all, you put in an array. 
of all the promises you want to wait for and you need to make sure to await all the promises because this is going to return a promise so p1 p2 and uh, this matches up so p1 the result of it is going to be the first item in the array so this this returns an array back and i'm destructuring the array here so p2 is the response here now we can do the same thing for json so this is going to be uh, p3 p4 right and we need to make sure to get the uh, what's it called the, the promises from them not await them here so don't don't be awaiting and then uh, promise doing the promise thing and then we have JSON 1 JSON 2 now you don't you probably don't even need to worry about running these two in parallel because I'm pretty sure it's a pretty quick operation but there you go so that's how you could parallel or er, uh, run them parallel these two and these two so now you're not just doing now we're only awaiting twice so we have two synchronous calls here instead of four uh, which is better for performance now a lot of times this won't make that big of a deal uh, because your calls are not taking that much time but if you're doing a lot of stuff in parallel or uh, uh, making a lot of async calls this will help you out a bunch so keep this in mind when you're using async and await and doing things definitely give this a try I highly recommend using await over dot then personally I use it all the time now and I really like it let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below that's all for this video and the code is up on github if you want to play around with this yourself